I, I thankfully don't have them anymore. I, I, I've had like one or two panic attacks back when I was younger when we first started touring. And actually, when we first started touring, I used to have social anxiety disorder. Uh, it's not clinically diagnosed, but I knew that any time I'd go out and meet fans, I would freak out. And at that time as well, I have the scars from it, but I had really terrible acne. So when our band was first kind of blowing up in the UK, we would always have fans that want to meet us and magazines that want to take pictures and all this stuff. And I didn't want to do it, not because I was trying to be egotistical or... or anything like that is that I didn't want to be seen because I had horrible acne all over my face and I was afraid to talk to people and be afraid to be in groups. Um, those things thankfully have shed just due to, I mean, the anxiety of being around people. Obviously, it kind of has to go away if you're in a business that involves people. I guess maybe it doesn't always and um, I hope that the people that experience that longer than me are able to find a way through it. But um, I think it was just from being thrown into it and being like a trial by fire, I had to be in it so it's something that helped dissipate I mean dissipated as as the years went on and, and having a really great support structure of great friends and family that that really helped bring me out of my shell um, I really give the credit to my wife for that one that when I used to just not want to ever speak to other people that I didn't know and so that that was pretty crippling when you're on tour um, thankfully she helped me get out of that and but back to the relations of the feelings of when those moments would happen, when questioning everything or when the band almost, you know, I felt like we almost broke up a couple times. Uh, yeah, it's usually kind of panic. And then you think about what else you can do. And for me, having only been doing this band my entire life, I joined this band when I was 12. Um, I, I, if I put myself in that mindset, I know I have thought, well, shit, I can't do anything else. So what, what would I do? I haven't gone to school for another trade. I don't have a skill set outside of just doing this. So I think that's another thing that, that always reminds me of the gut instinct that, that pulls me back into doing what I, what I meant to do. Thinking in my head, even before I'm about to say it, I actually even feel bad saying it because I know what I do for a living is something that millions and millions of people wish they could do. It's something that they've, that people have aspired to do. Myself as well have worked to do. Um, I think back to the times, and it, there maybe isn't even just one specific time. There have been a couple times in this band where our band is almost broken up. Namely, I, f if I think during the area of the Crusade. The Crusade was the time like when we were about to record that record. No one in the band was really speaking to each other. I remember when we were doing the record itself, no one was in the studio at the same time as anyone else was recording. And basically, as one person did their instrument finish, they leave, and the other band member would come in. As this happens every once in a while, like, am I enough? Am I a good enough singer, a good enough guitar player? Is this band doing enough? Is this band leaving the proper mark? Um, I was at a restaurant with my wife, and I was asking these questions. and. You know, as soon as I finished saying, like, man, I don't know if I'm doing this right, if, am I doing this well enough, is this the right path for me, one of the servers actually came up, tapped me on the shoulder and said, hey, I'm a big fan of your band, I love everything you do, and brought me, like, an, an extra plate of stuff that they made in the kitchen. He's like, yeah, everyone in the kitchen staff, they're all fans of your band, too. And it was like a sign. It was, like, within <laughs> five seconds of saying that question that I've, that I've said maybe five, ten times in my life. And, like I said, I feel bad saying it, but it's, it's better to be honest that no matter what you do for a living, there are difficult times but I'm so fortunate that I get to do what I love. And even when you do what you love, it's important that there are ups and downs. I think that, that it's important that nothing is ever perfect and that, that there is struggle and push and pull and tension release because that helps you create the best things while you're in the middle of it. And throughout those difficult times, it's, it's best to channel that energy into something. And that's obviously something I always channel in all of our music. Themes like you see in the song Strife or in suffocating sight or in dead and gone those are things that i really feel when i talk about anxiety and issues of like self-loathing and all these things and i know i seem like a balanced happy person outside the music and i am because i have the outlet of being in the band and brazilian jiu-jitsu and ashtanga yoga and weightlifting and friends and family and music and i'm aware that all those things are what i need to have my balance in life with me, I've always known that I'm my biggest critic, and everyone that knows me always says the same thing. They always say that I get too much in my head, and that I will at times blame myself for things that that maybe are, are reactions that I go to. But being aware of that, something I always push with our fans, that I always push with people who listen to our band, is that the same way a lot of people are concerned with taking care of their bodies you know you see people that talk about doing yoga or people that are physically active people that take care of their bodies in every single way possible i feel that the biggest thing that we neglect namely in this country is that you also need to take care of your mind in the exact same way whether that's finding outlets um physically that help you mentally feel better or even just having someone to talk to 
Um, the big break that we had before Silence in the Snow, not only was I taking guitar lessons and vocal lessons, I was also seeing a therapist because I feel that that's important. And just because, and I, and I feel even me saying it there, I think that when people hear that, they think, oh, if I do that, there's something wrong with me. That's not the case. The case is we need to take care of our minds just as much as of our bodies, if not more so. So when you recognize patterns or things that you may do that maybe point blame at yourself, you need to recognize that that's, that's a habit that you've learned. And it's important to find what outlets help you feel balanced. And I think a big thing is knowing that you're not the only one that feels that way. I think that's a lot of that's a thing that a lot of people feel. It's it's a fine line between sometimes not knowing what the answers is, or answers are and looking around yourself and seeing how do you handle normal how, how do you handle things normally. Um, the biggest thing with this band nowadays is that. I tell people that are newer fans that just want it to be, for the people that just want to listen to us for driving music, gym music, background music, that's fine. But the people that really want to dig further and see what the music is about, our, our music is about acceptance and it's about showing people that they're not the only ones that go through these dark things. Um, I am a happy person outside of the music, like I mentioned before, thanks to being able to put this, put all those feelings and all those emotions to pen and pad and putting it into music and I find that what people need to do is also find their outlet. They don't have to be musicians or have to be creative people or have to be artistic but what they need to do is put negative energy into something positive because if you don't have that release then it sticks with you and it brings you down. You matter, you're needed, and you rock.